What's up everyone and welcome to FEQ 107. What's going on? I actually just came from the two haunted gigs that we had in Sweden this past weekend. Uh, I still haven't showered from the gig we had in Gothenburg. I'm still smelling kind of good actually. Yeah, it was an amazing weekend. Gothenburg was obviously kick-ass. That's like the hometown of uh, the haunted I would say. And uh, uh, yeah, so here I am. Did you see this, by the way, and the other guitar that we launched this week? Probably not. I have a guess that uh, this guitar right here will probably be sold out before this FAQ is being aired. It's just a little guess. How are you guys doing? What? I'm, ju I'm just ready to go. Let's just start with the questions. Herschel Walker, hola, why don't you show any love for Marshall? Um, basically because I don't really have that much of an experience with Marshall. I mean, I remember my friend back when I started playing guitar, he had a Marshall valve state, and you know, uh, that was a better amp than the amp I had at the time. And, uh, you know, it sounded okay, I guess. I mean, we were beginners. We didn't really know how, how an amplifier should sound or, or not. But then a couple of years after, when I started playing bands and all, there was a friend's band, and they both owned two TSL, you know, Marshall TSL. And uh, those were really good, actually. But personally, I, I just never owned any Marshall amplifiers. I don't know why. I mean, the JCM 800, 900, never really, you know, got to have my full finger on them. You know, I tried out Frederick's JCM 800 with the, the uh, 1433 boost, sounded great and amazing. And it obviously, you know, a lot of the older style, you know, Marshall type, amplifiers that, uh, you know, the Satan is basically like an old style, you know, modern Marshall type of sound to it. And, uh, you know, they, they were really important back in the day, but for me personally, they weren't really a thing. GVM, that's a great metal amplifier, but still, there's just better options for me out there. So, uh, yeah, that's what it is, basically. I always saw Marshall as more of a lifestyle brand than anything else. You know, they have their fridges and, you know, their caps and clothing whatever so um yes hola the boy track hola what is the most disappointing high-end guitar you have tried thanks and cheers from ukraine this is a really really tough question to answer because i know personally like the production guitar like the absolute most disappointing production guitar i've ever owned uh, was the ibanez mtm2 that i used in the beginning of my youtube career only reason why i had it was because it looks awesome. I mean, it's the black one with the white binding. Uh, it's uh, the Mick Thompson signature. I don't really care about that. I was more about the looks of the guitar more than anything else. I mean, the black and you know white binding looks just stealthy as hell. But you know, playing wise, that guitar was not good at all. It also had a finished black neck, while Ibanez usually use oiled or you know satin, and it, it just sucked, like blatantly sucked. Uh, but, you know, I still had that guitar and played it because I thought it looked cool. Uh, High-end guitar that sucked. I'm probably gonna get shit for this because I haven't tried that many. When I tried an Ernie Ball John Petrucci guitar, I don't remember whose guitar it was, but I just remember playing and I was really excited to play it. And I played it and it was like... Yeah, they didn't really do anything for me. But then again, I know they've released so many guitars now. I would love to try out uh, one of the new ones. That was an old one uh, from like the beginning of the John Petrucci Ernie Ball days. And uh, I would love to try one now. They look amazing. Maybe not the shovel one, by the way. Uh, what's that? The, ma the Majesty? Uh, but I do like the original Ernie Ball look very much, even though I much preferred the Ibanez days of John Petrucci. Uh, so there you go, uh, it was an Ernie Ball John Petrucci guitar. Hopefully I'll get to try another one at some point so I can change my opinion. I mean, that was just one guitar, that's what it is. But I was a little bit disappointed when I was playing it. Thank you so much. Timbert32, hi Ola, how is your thumb doing after those two gigs? Thank you so much for asking. The first gig I had, it was like, you know, I'm feeling it in my thumb and you know, uh, it's hurting, but it's still manageable for me to play. I'm just a little bit more careful, I'm not doing as much down picking as I should just to save up on some strength. But on the Gothenburg gig, where we played sort of semi-outside, it was a little bit colder and my thumb, 
you know, it got really stiffed up and uh, it was a problem actually, I was really struggling through that gig and uh, it was not easy, it actually made me a little bit uh, worried to be honest, but today it feels good, it's the day after the show and it feels good, so I just have to be a little careful you know, with playing long gigs, I haven't played a headlining gig in a long time so I mean it was 75 minutes of playing uh, two days in a row, which is, it's exhausting and uh, it was a little rough maybe on my thumb there Oh Ola, you're so cute talking about your cute little thumb Well, there it is, thank you so much for asking Dekill, are you using a Jim Dunlop Big Stubby 3mm? Hell yeah! I'm not using a big Jim Dunlop Big Stubby 3mm, hell yeah Right now, what I'm trying out is the Jim Dunlop USA Altex Jazz 3 guitar picks and these are 2mm However, they are a bit faced off at the edges and uh, I'm really liking these not really deciding yet if I'm gonna continue playing them or not but then again, I, I just like trying out new stuff but at some point I always kind of get back into playing the regular Jazz 3 Tordex and um, yeah, so I've actually used uh, the Altex now for these two gigs Okay, I'm gonna use the Tordex right now Yeah, I actually have to put in more effort when I'm playing the uh, the Tortex, so... I think what I like about, you know, a little thicker picks now is that now that I've broken my thumb and I have my spray I don't have to put as much force into when I'm hitting the strings which is good for my thumb but I'm not sure if it sounds as good as what it does with the regular Jazz Freeze but uh, for me playing right now, I mean it eases off a little bit of the pressure I need to push on the strings when I'm playing So that's, that's a good thing for my little, oh my little poor thumb Ola the thumb, put a thumb up your asshole uh, Colton Vance, hey Colton what's up, I love you What's your favorite season and why? PS you're the best, oh no, my members are so beautiful uh, Favorite season, I think my favorite season depending on for what type of application you would say if I'm writing music I'm really liking the autumns here in Sweden you know where it starts to rain a lot more and uh, you know it becomes a little bit more wet outside but personally you know after a really long winter the early spring and like mid spring think of it like this in Sweden the winters are really long at the end of March where it's like okay can this bullshit never end you know, getting that first segment of sun and spring is just like such a great feeling you know, the days become longer and it's just like hmm, that's a really awesome season right there so I think it's a tie between autumn for songwriting and for me personally in my life and my happiness it's the early spring so there you go, Ola smelling the flowers in spring Stanislav Potasievsky shit Ola, you're good with the Russian names What's up Ola, I hope you're doing great I wonder what are your thoughts on Infant Annihilator and Rings of Saturn maybe on the whole extreme metal thing Great question and I'm happy that I'm able to answer this because this past weekend when I drove down to Gothenburg on those gigs I heard Infant Annihilator for the first time I was just checking through a Spotify extreme metal list because that's what I do when I'm out driving I just check new lists or playlists just to if there's anything new that I need to listen to I thought it was something called like the Extreme Metal Workout Playlist and Infinite Annihilator was there and you know, I listened to it and it, it's, it's extremely brutal and sounds almost unreal it sounds unplayable to be honest <laughs> like, how is that even possible? it's just way too fast it's almost to the point where, you know there's a lack of brutality just because it's so fast I think there's a point where you can't really play faster, it won't become more brutal or anything like that or more evil it's just plain fast for the sake of being fast you know, I thought it was pretty cool but it's not really my thing I'm too dumb to comprehend what's happening so it's like oh shit, oh shit I get stressed out and like shit uh, oh, it's like it feels like when I'm back in school and trying to keep up with the lessons and the, you know, the classes it's like oh, yes, that's stress I think it's my brain it just cannot keep up with the music so <laughs> there you go but it sounds brutal though Bohemoth Studios, also all that Sea of Thieves footage makes me want to get back into it 
Okay, in the latest FAQ, I played Sea of Thieves on my screen here. Maybe I'll do it again, because I'm playing it right now with my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful members. At first, I bought it because one of my members, Mike, convinced me to buy it. Uh, he didn't tell me about the Xbox Pass, where you just pay $2 a month and, and, uh, and you get all their content. But yes, I paid full price for Sea of Thieves. I didn't like it, because it was super slow. And I tried to refund it, but Microsoft wouldn't take my refund. So I'm stuck with it. So I play a little bit more and it's becoming better and better. You know, it's not very fast paced, but there's something nice about just sailing the seas with a couple of friends. You know, you, 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 know, you angle the sails and you, know, you, you steer the boat and just, you navigate the maps and all that. And then eventually Kraken comes up and just kills all the fun. <laughs> That's basically that game. So there you are. Have you heard about Preachers of Life, by the way? Uh, maybe that could be a riff for today. Preachers of Life, it's way more positive than uh, Preachers of Death. But every time I die in Mordor, I pray Preachers of Life. And it goes like this. It's basically Preachers of Death, but in major. <laughs> Walking the tightrope Between good and good You get the idea. Yuval Schiffman, seriously or not, how did you get that clean sound? It sounds really good. So he's referring to the uh, FAQ from last week uh, where I was using this sound. This is the Pliny, actually. And, uh, you know, I thought that all my presets that I made for the video I, I, I did, I thought they would be available as you downloaded a plugin, but it's not. So, so yeah, I'm just going to put this preset in the description of this video. You can download it for your uh, Neural DSP Pliny plugin, okay? And, you know, I, I really like this Pliny plugin. It's just like, it's just a really good go to plugin. You know, I have that clean sound and I have a lead, so. So the Pliny plugin has a really good wide variety of different tones, which I like. And I'm not sponsored to say this. I'm not affiliated with Neural DSP or anything like that. It's like I just spat on myself. Yep. Hey, I just think it's a really good uh, plugin for like clean sounds, for lead sounds, and for rhythm. So yeah, just I, I, I'm not getting any money. I'm just saying that. Jeremy Cook. Oh, it's good seeing you play more. Your live stream the other day was cool. Looks like you playing live would be entertaining. Thank you so much. Uh, that live stream was actually a really good success for me. And uh, I think a lot of people enjoy that format. So I will keep on doing a couple of those. I'm thinking of doing like a, you know, the solo album, like a full playthrough of the whole solo album. And maybe do like a full playthrough through a feared album, for instance, uh, in live streams. Because it's a, just a really cool segment. And that's good for me because then I have to practice my own shit, which is good. So uh, keep on the lookout for more stuff like that. Hey! Hey! Oh, Papa! Oh, Tita. Hello, Kitty. Vet du, jag ska göra färdigt här, och så kommer jag sen. Okej? Okej, hejdå. Yeah, so keep on the lookout for more live streams like that. I thought it, I, I really enjoyed doing them, and it was cool to see. K-Mac was in there, uh, Davey was in there, uh, who else? <laughs> Leo, Frogleaf was in there, and Robert Baker. So a lot of YouTubers... Uh, YouTubers? <laughs> what is a YouTuber? Write in the comment section, what is a YouTuber? Uh, no, but a lot, a bunch of other YouTubers were in there, so it was really awesome. It felt like a success for me. So there you go, thank you. Casper Grutis. Hey, Olaf, I noticed you're using the Axe 8 together with the Seymour Duncan Power Amp now. What are your thoughts on it so far? Perhaps you can give us some chugs through this setup. I own an Axe 8 together with a small mower power amp, and I want to know if it's worth upgrading. Okay, I haven't really used it live yet, but I used it for the live stream that I had. Uh, it sounded really good. It was the first time I tried that combo out. And uh, it sounded really good, but I haven't had a chance to crank it up loud. But uh, if you would go out live and play live, I would probably at least bring, you know, the rack version, which is, what is it, like 700 watts or something like that? Uh, just to be safe. 
you know, uh, when, when, sometimes when you play live, you just have to go really, really <laughs> loud to be able to hear yourself. So I would probably yeah, team it up with the, the, the bigger rack. Not sure what that one costs. It's probably a little bit more expensive than the 170, but it might be worth it. I don't know. Valor, hey Ola, what is the song album that you are the most proud of making or being part of? I mean, the standard answer would probably be to say that it was me being a part of a Six Year Under album or a The Haunted album. But you know what? I'm probably the most proud. Like, in hindsight, I'm most proud about my own album, my solo album. Uh, and I'm really proud about myself actually putting that album out, even. Because, you know, for a long time I was very, very reluctant on even releasing anything with my name on it. I mean, it's like, I, I always had the idea in my head that no one was really interested in me, but they would probably be more interested in me with the band. You know, like, that's why I formed Fear, you know. I was just certain that people just wanted to hear and see real bands out there and not really care too much about the individuals. It took me a fair bit of time before I actually took the decision that I would release a solo album under my name. And uh, it's actually thanks to Delta, I would say, and his drumming that kind of pushed me to finish off this album. And I'm really happy about the response of the album. It seems like a lot of people, you know, really enjoyed that type of music, which is not necessarily you know, super shreddy instrumental music, which is more of a, more of a journey, you know, into different styles of music, not necessarily different styles, but you know, it's just a big trip. Wow, my vocabulary is amazing. So yeah, my solo album is something I'm extremely proud about now in the hindsight, because I think we did a really good job. Me and Luis have been working our asses off you know, to get this done and, you know, shipping out everything and, you know, preparing everything. And it makes me really proud and it makes me really happy that Luis was such a big part of it all. You know, still to this day, you know, when we had that special thing back a couple of uh, weeks ago, and, you know, a lot of people ordered and it just makes me really happy to see that people are ready to support music. And uh, it gives me a lot of hope and it really inspires me. So it's not only because of me, it's because of you guys as well. You guys are awesome. I love you guys, okay? Seriously. David Castangue. Hey Ola, you had a coffee with several guitarists and artists. Based on their personality and or profile, is there any fit for a musical project with one of them? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I have a problem. It's that I hate other people. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's a little harsh to say, but no, I don't hate other people. You know, I've had so many collaborations with people that, you know, I'm very, very cautious about who I work with and just very, very cautious about who I, you know, let in to work with me. I mean, for me, it's very important to find the right people for the right tasks. At this point, I would love to just collaborate with a bunch of people, but I'm also very, you know, reluctant of doing it because I think I'm afraid it would consume too much of my time. I mean, as of right now, you know, I'm just consumed by everything, basically. I mean you know, my YouTube, solar guitars, everything. I mean, I've stepped up my YouTube game, and, you know, and with that, I mean, I've sacrificed and worked even harder for YouTube. So I don't really see in my schedule that I would be able to do any collaborations or musical projects with anyone else right now. I don't want to take anything off my family side of things to be able to do anything of this right now. I mean, I'm working with this full time. The time after, you know, five o'clock is so dear to me. So I just, can't really see it fitting my schedule right now. But eventually, you know, when I when I lose my hair and, uh, you know, lose my YouTube audience because of me losing my hair, there might be time for me to uh, collaborate with uh, some awesome people. Maybe it would be cool to do something with Jan Majura just because, you know, we have a good connection and uh, she's fun. And, you know, having fun people around you, I think it's a, I think it's very important for, you know, the, the, just to keep it passionate you know, the music. So there you go. Thank you so much for that question, David, my beautiful, beautiful member. And you know what? That was actually the last question. Guys, thank you so much for this. <gasps> Riffle today. Riffle today. <laughs> there was a guy coming up to me in Gothenburg who said, Hey, Ola, in the next FAQ, you have to show me how you play Unbroken by Pantera because I saw you did it on the uh, second fret. I just wanted to see how you did it. So I'm going to show you that. 
This is not necessarily the way that Dimebag played it. Okay, so I think that Dimebag played it somewhere up here. Not sure, but I'm playing on the second fret, so... Not sure if it's correct or not, but there it is at least. There you go. Look at this. It's the purpler burl. It's the purpler burl. Oh. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you for watching my video. My Twitch. I'm streaming on Twitch here and there. It's uh, good if you like video games and if you like me talking. The Twitch is just amazing for that. There's a link to that in the description up here at the end of the video, somewhere, uh, somewhere here. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section of this video. I'm Positive Ola. See ya.